Hey everybody, it's Joe here, back in the land of barking dogs, car alarms and, and seagulls. Um, I've been trying my best to post content every day that people can practice in their homes while they're under quarantine, escape for a little bit and talk about maybe some tools and skills that we can share with the kids and, and keep the family occupied. Um, I made a video yesterday talking about uh, True North and Magnetic North for a guy who had a great idea of getting his maps out and planning a hike for when this is all over and improving his skills around map reading and that's four figure grid references, six figure grid references, eight figure grid references, working out route cards and stuff. There's a whole world when it comes to maps and what you can do in your front living room before you leave. Also, I'd like to apologize for my eye. My youngest guy decided that I needed to see something really, 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 really close and I think uh, scratched it up and stuff so it's a little swollen but I'm, I'm here and I'm doing what I do. I wanted to take a moment to talk about a, a thing that I get every now and again in why I'm such a big proponent of these two items, a journal and a compass, especially a compass. A compass to me and to anybody who kind of delves into this world, you'll soon realize that it's probably next to like your water bottle and your knife and those accoutrements the most versatile tool that you can carry as a woods person it, you've got fire capabilities signaling capabilities obvious the obvious direction and, and not getting lost and getting found capabilities but also it has other functionalities that maybe some people may have seen maybe some people haven't seen and i thought i'd share them with you because you can practice them in your backyard like you will see me do or in a field if you can leave your home if you're in one of those countries that allows the two kilometer radius and, and to get out and get a bit of exercise so the first one we'll just run through really quickly is this bad boy this magnifying glass here it's for map reading but it's also strong enough to ignite material like char cloth and punk wood easy. <laughs> the next one is the mirror up here, which is a sighting mirror designed for working with your compass when you're looking down it so you can adjust your bezel ring, but it can also be used for signaling. Again, a great tool and something you can practice out your back garden. You can practice your signaling and your SOS and your semaphores if you want to delve into that kind of world. It's also great for first aid. Again, checking your face you know, making sure parts of you can't see. Like me, if I've got a, a bogey eye, I can check it in the morning if I need to do that. And ironically, a bit of a self-confidence boost, so you don't have to talk to yourself anymore. But I thought I'd talk, take a little bit to talk about maybe some of the other features that you can do or some of the other tricks that your hacks that you can do with your compass. There's two ways you can use your compass for measuring the height of an object. Very simply, and the most simplest way to do it, is to set your compass to west or where your inclinometer uh, works. And for what an inclinometer is, is this little plumb line that moves freely at the back of your compass. So once you have that set to west and you haven't dialed in any magnetic declination, you can use your inclinometer. 
So simply holding it up at an angle like this, sliding the height of whatever it is that you want to work at and moving backwards safely until your inclinometer reads 45 degrees. Then just measure the distance that you have walked from your object and you will get a rough guesstimation of the height. The second one is a little bit more advanced than something that I stumbled across when I was working for a power line company in and forestry. If you haven't got space, like most forestry could be low growth, could be uh, something like Sitka spruce and a, 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 almost like a crop forest. That mightn't give you the space that you need to go back to look up. So this is where your journal comes into play. I'll try my best to get fancy editing and roll in the trigonometry table. But I keep the trigonometry table in my journal. Some people print it out and they sellotape it to the front of their compass here. But it's using trig to figure out the height of it. Now, I'm not a maths whiz, so if I can work it out, it's something with a bit of practice that most people can work out. So what you want to do is establish what object you want to take a measurement of, walk back, place a stick in the ground 10 feet away, give or take, we're estimating here, 10 feet away. Then setting your inclinometer to west again, take the height of where you want to gauge it. And then just reuse your mirror to read the measurement of the inclinometer. So we're holding it up. I can see that the inclinometer is at 50 degrees using the table that you've seen in the corner of the video and I will drop it in the comment section down below. We will say that that is an angle of 50 degrees. 50, I happen to know, is 1.19. Multiply that by 10, because that's the distance. Trigonometry, we're trying to create a triangle here. So we take our 10, 1.19 is very easily divisible by 10, and that's why we use 10. So that's 11.9 compared to the feet, 12 feet. We'll round it up. Taking my height, because that's where I'm viewing it from, six feet. 12 by six is 18 feet. So I now know my tree is 18 feet. A more advanced way of measuring it, but just showing the multifunctionality of a compass for gauging height. Now, you don't want to gauge the height of something. You want to gauge the width of something. So there's a very simple way to do that. There is more advanced methods, but this is the one that works for me. I'm, again, I'm a simple, simple kind of guy. So we will just say for argument's sake that the object that I'm gonna look at is on a bearing of 200 degrees. So you want to get yourself square, 90 degrees, straight on with a tree or a rock or something the far side of the bank, a creek, or road or track or whatever it is that you want to gauge the distance of. Shoot an azimuth to it, 200 degrees, a bearing, 200 degrees. All you gotta do then is add 45 degrees. So now I have a new bearing of 245. Keeping your object where you need it to be, simply walk along, and when your azimuth or your bearing lines back up, your 245 lines back up with your tree, the distance you have walked is the distance across the river, across the creek, across the road. I'll try my best to see if I can get a little picture or a schematic and roll it up in here and I'll drop it in the comments. But this is something that you can practice if you've got a bit of yard space. It doesn't have to be huge. You maybe need 15 feet or in a park, you can bring two trekking poles and work it around that way. And speaking of estimation, another great way is the Napoleonic method. This is where you see, see back in the day, people used to do this. You can also use your compass because it's a straight edge by lining it up with your eyebrows. But you would take your hand and tilt your hand until the palm meets the bank or the far side of where you need to go. You can use your compass, do the same, but tilt it down. Then simply rotate and where your palm meets the ground is the rough guesstimation of the distance of the far side there. The Napoleonic method. Then you could also maybe take your compass if you want to measure the height of someone and or the height of a object and you're not alone. Hold your compass up. You'll see it's got measurements on the side here. And then mark on it the height of the person, say another six feet, and hold it. Make a, make a mark with your thumb. Tell the person to stand back, and then you can use that to step up the tree. Take your measurement three times, multiply it by the height of the human that you happen to be with. Again, you got your guesstimation. Another thing that you can do, and this one is purely for the compass nerds out there, and maybe it might interest somebody else, is you can use your compass to figure out the latitude and longitude of where you are in the world. Crazy idea, some might say. 
Well, when it comes to figuring out the latitude, the North Star is a fixed point in the sky. So you can take your inclinometer and use it just like the way you would to measure a mountain, but you can line it up with the horizon and gauge the angle of where you are with the North Star. So you can tip and tilt. That is roughly your latitude. When it comes to your longitude, it's a little bit more difficult, but you can take, <laughs> it's somebody's birthday next door, I apologize. But you can take um, Greenwich Mean Time. So you take the hours that you are from Greenwich Mean Time. So say, for example, if you're stateside, some areas in Central America would be six hours ahead of Greenwich Mean Time. You take those six hours, multiply it by 15 degrees, and then you will get your rough longitude of where you're at. Should be about 80 odd. You'll be out give or take. There is a very fancy formulaic equation for this, which I will drop it down below. Because in a country like Ireland, where we are not exactly five, six, seven hours outside of Greenwich Mean Time, we're only one hour, you can work it down to minutes. It's split up into a, an hour, so it's 60 minutes, and there's an equation for that. But again, very simply, North Star, inclinometer, time you are away from Greenwich and you can figure out your latitude and your longitude so there some things that you can mess around with at home I hope the video isn't too much of a rant but these are just some ideas that I've had that you can play around with in the field or in the in the backyard maybe maybe show the kids some of them and if also if nothing else to prove just how multifunctional these little bad boys are and why you should always carry one when you're out in the field and why it's worth investing in a good one I hope everybody is staying safe, washing their hands, wear some goggles, not just around people, but around your children, so you don't end up with a with a bogey eye like me. And um, as always, stay safe. Peace.